today it's time for one of the most striking SUVs out there, the Mercedes GLE 63S AMG Coupe Autobahn ride inside. In the front, the typical AMG grille, here vertical fins and in the lower part, wider than in the upper part, massive Mercedes star, but two-dimensional to hide the sensors behind it. Then we also have black contrast in the lower part, huge air intakes here and the multi-beam LED, 650 meters of high beam performance is already included here in the top AMG spec. A striking side profile with these 4 meters 94 or 194 inches. Of course, the GLE is available as the SUV like this or here as the coupe shape with even stronger shoulders. The 63S, sporty dimensions of course, here painted wheel arches, vehicle color. By the way, Mojave Desert Silver, so you have this kind of desert shade walls. And the funny thing is, with boring vehicles, this, ve this vehicle color makes it maybe even more boring. But with sporty vehicles, it has something very special, doesn't it? Especially in the combination with the black wheels. 21 inch would be standard. These here are the optional 22 inch and optional carbon ceramic brakes here. Of course, very expensive. And then with these golden brake calipers as a contrast. Then we have the night package. So even more black in the lower panel. Also black mirror caps. This is an option. And towards the rear, we also have tinted windows. So, wow, isn't that a massive look? What a massive appearance here also in the rear, especially three-quarter rear perspective. And then an integrated spoiler lip. I think I like this really this subtle design as for that. GLE 63S, the S model, a little bit more horsepower, but yeah, that batching looks a little bit weird, doesn't it? Massive diffuser starting in the lower part. And these exhausts, first of all, look, wow, super impressive. But then when you take a look at it, <whistles> out of fuel, fake exhaust police alert. Yeah, we won't miss that. This is here. I mean, the air goes through, but still, mm, come on, really? And suspension-wise, the 63 models come standard with the air suspension. However, here in the AMD trim, on a stiffer note, together with the big 22-inch wheels, how will that play out for comfort? We will find out in the driving part very soon. Oh, and by the way, this one here does not feature a launch control. However, it does offer an emotional start program they call it that way um, so you have to hold down one of the shifting pedals and then at the same time press the start stop button and then the exhaust note is a little bit more powerful because the valve is already open under the hood here we have the 4 liter v8 bi-turbo over 600 horsepower 612 plus the electric boost from the mild hybrid system here in germany for example all-wheel drive with the rear wheel bias and a lot of carbon fiber use here. 3.7 seconds is the acceleration figure in miles per hour to 60 miles or 3.8 seconds to 1 kilometers an hour. Pretty massive. The same acceleration figures, by the way, for the Audi RS Q8 and the BMW X5 M or X6 M. Only the Porsche Cayenne Turbo GT is meanwhile faster. We also, of course, have a special race track feature with that one. Car key here with a nice unique black finish and the AMG badge. I really like this car key. Also prefer this one here over the very, very new ones. And also classic door handles we've seen with all new Mercedes vehicles with these adaptive door handles, which are kind of BS, I think. And door closing sound. Very, oh, wow. This is not only solid, this is like, this sounds beautiful inside of the doors here still with seat controls that can be physically moved that's way to go how it's supposed to be in the all new mercedes vehicles you might know you've seen them from our reviews eqs eqe s class and so on they cannot be physically moved anymore and that's a step backwards so this is still the mercedes deal we know and we like firmers the sound system really great surround sound carbon fiber insert inlet reasonable door pockets and AMG entry badge right here. Steering wheel in the AMG style and my favorite one with microfiber surface, great grip, not sweaty in summer times and warm in winter times. And here we still also have physical buttons on the steering wheel. They're really high class. There is some kind of touch pad here on the top part, but that's actually quite well to control. And also on the right side then, for example, for the volume, this is how we need it and not like in the all new models. At the moment, all is blacked out and you can see here the screen 
kind of forms one unit and will of course then change from the visual appearance when we turn everything on. Seats in the 53 AMG in the US, you can still get the full article seat if you want to go animal free. Here in the 63 models, only animal skin is available. There is here some microfiber trim on it, but the main part then is animal skin. Getting inside, shoe tab with the black microfiber shoes fitting to the black microfiber steering wheel. Yeah, so you know, everyone needs, you know, their own hobbies. <laughs> That's mine. Then upright seating position here and although this like the AMG version you still have a comfortable seat ergonomics and also a good king of the road seating position the GLE for that reason is one of my favorite SUVs because it gives you such a relaxing ex um, experience however in the driving part we'll test it how it moves to the you know comfort sport compromise in this AMG version this will be very exciting electric control of the steering wheel when we turn on the when we turn on the ignition there we go <laughs> So here now, steering wheel up and down, in and out. Also electric controls on the seat, I already talked about that. And one wheel is 86 or 601, we can move the seat a little bit lower. This is the only thing when the controls are on the inside of the doors for car reviewing, it's not that practical. Otherwise it's really cool. Here enough headroom with one wheel is 86, 601. Nice microfiber ceiling here from the inside, of course, as well. You can also get a panoramic roof if you like. Interior overview, call me old school, but if you compare the new hyper screen interiors with screens all over the place in the new Mercedes vehicles, here the electric ones for example, and then you take a look at this one, I think this is the better layout for the cockpit, isn't it? It's still sensual here also with a lot of great ambient lighting and nighttime you can very well see it. And then two times 12.3 inch screens and this is all screen I need actually. What's your take on that? Do you prefer this setup here by Mercedes or the all new ones? Steering wheel itself, again with a nice look and also good grip with the microfiber then here. Right touchpad here and left touchpad. And the left one is actually then to control something in the instruments. So I think that's a good solution. Uh, at least we have here still the hard buttons for the cruise control and then here for the volume. This is the easiest way to change the volume while driving, definitely. The AMG models come here with the special gauges, so you can pick the driving mode right there. And when you click it also, um, you know, you can directly get to the individual mode. But yeah, usually I just turn it then here, for example. On the left side, you have something, you know, similar. You can activate the exhaust mode, but here you can also pick on these, here on these screens, what you want to change. Most of the time I leave that and just turn the driving modes right here and that's it. The digital instruments with a special AMG gauge, big speed in the middle and then you can adjust what you want to see. You can also have the map here inside. This is also possible like this or you can also have then here the most recent guidances and you can also put it to full screen so you have the best map view like this. It always look like some, you know, like some um, army goggles or something like binoculars. <laughs> what do you want your thing in that? And of course, you can also go back to the classic gauges, for example, if you rather prefer that. So you don't have to go for the AMG performance gauges. So um, these show you also like some boost and something. But you can also, if you like, just go to styles and displays and then go for a more classic appearance like this. Or then super sport, this is also possible, looks a little bit more tech alike. Most stuff is already included in the 63 model. The head up display is not still an option. And here you can also get like this performance head up display view. Infotainment system here with performance gauges. So when you turn on the engine here, and then, yeah, race mode, why not? <laughs> see also the Car is shaking now a little bit when I'm there. You can see engine torque, engine output, and so on, kilowatt and horsepower. That's pretty fancy, isn't it? And then to the main menu, like this MBUX. Let's take a look at the GPS, like here. And I can also control it here with my right thumb, by the way, with the touchpad. But this is kind of like an okay touchpad. And the other possibility is then from down below, then another touchpad. So different redundant controls as for that. And inside the map, you can see here it's kind of responsive enough, definitely. And let's ask the Mercedes. Hey, Mercedes. How can I help? Drive me to Frankfurt am Main.
So it depends on the web connection. At the moment here, there's hardly any signal, so it takes longer. Route That's the catch. Main is starting. Yeah, but in this case here also, you can see here, destination is set then by the MUX. Oh, and that camera system is really nice. Rear view camera, drone view from above, and when you put in the drive gear, then front camera, reverse gear, reverse camera, that's how it's supposed to be. Apple CarPlay integration with bezels left and right, but at least, well, has a function because you can still see the temperature there and so I can also understand it. And music listening here, I mean, this Bermuda sound system here is really nice, good surround sound, love that. Yes, we still have menu climate knobs and also with very nice clicking sounds, love that. Lower area, slide this one open, then inductive charging pad, USB-C connectors for your smartphone, Apple CarPlay Android Auto with the wire, and then adaptive cup holes, and they can be cooled or heated. Nice. Then we have this touchpad here, but I would prefer if they would stick with the manual turning job, because when you're driving and you work with thin air, so to speak, it's not ideal. Here, classic volume jog for the co-driver. There's still a map hotkey here to access it in the infotainment system, also uh, nicely done. And here you have, for example, possibility to, to tune down the air suspension, so to set it lower or higher, depending on the surfaces you face and that exhaust button. However, it also switches around with the driving modes. And then the split armrest like this with more space underneath. In the rear, we have soft touch leatherette, also the inside of the doors, and then a lot of legroom left, no problem, because these seats here from the back part have a recess right there. And uh, this seat bench also falls a little bit backward. That is not the best for comfort in seating, but better for the legroom. Also nice carbon fiber insert here. Headroom also no problem, four tall adults, easy. So it's actually enough space right there, but to me not the most comfortable seating here in the rear, but on a very high level being said that. In the middle part, not such a high middle tunnel, that's okay. And in this middle part, it's actually quite soft still, so you can easily sit with three tall adults here. Then you have also a separate climate unit for the rear, one more USB-C charger. And in the middle part, you have a nice armrest with adaptive cup holders like this detail work, and you can also fold the seats from here directly. However, no possibility to move the bench or something. Oh, and I found something literally by mistake. So this one here, you can put it down towards you. They can easily access the USB-C chargers now, but when you put it a little bit harder like this, oh, then this happens. So uh, very rarely we see something like this by Mercedes. Or oh, is it maybe intended that I can really access some cables in repairing or something? Does anyone from a workshop know? With 655 up to 1,790 liters, you lose about 200 liters if you compare it to the SUV shape. Headroom wise, not such a compromise. Here also in length and width, it's okay. You can see here with the cabin trolley, easy, big enough trunk. Height wise, of course, it is something of a compromise. So the SUV goes a little bit further right there, whereas the coupe shape is falling down. This then is a problem, um, you know, when putting things like this, still okay. But when you put them like this in the SUV, it would still fit. And here it starts to get a problem, but again, not such a hard compromise. This one here to be folded, this uh, cover then there, and you can here actually just lower the vehicle with the air suspension to have an easy access. There's a 12 volt power supply here, but there are no possibilities to fold the seats. You really have to reach over or do it then from you know, from the seating area. This hatch here opens really, really high. You know, this way, of course, I can still stand underneath it. That's good. However, it might be a problem for the height of some basement garage, electric tailgate closing, and very sensitive. Mercedes really does that very, very well to have good child safety for that. And what I also did is I restricted the height of the opening for my basement garage, so it stops right here. Good boy because when you press and hold the stop button here, then you can really save this position. So you move it manually in that position you want. It's not too easy because the electric motor is always picking up again. So you really have to hold it tight. And then hold, you press and hold. And then you hear like a, there it is. And then it saves this position for the next time. Damn it. Now I reset it, I'm not sure what, I have to do it all over again in the basement crash. Okay, I changed it just for you here. Yeah. <laughs>
Welcome to Thomas's Performance Driving Lounge here with the Mercedes GLE Coupe as the 63 AMG version 63 S more than 6 in horsepower from this 4 liter V8 by turbo and we'll go to the race mode and start from 40 kilometers an hour to whatever car passing by and let's go. Up 200 kilometers an hour, 125 miles an hour. That went really quick. 3.8 seconds is the acceleration finger to 100 kilometers an hour from standstill, or 3.7 then to 260 miles an hour. And whoa, steering wheel really kind of sensitive at higher speeds. Look at that lane change here. The suspension stays super straight, so there's no leaning whatsoever. Although it's a big SUV, but yeah, I'm not sure. I have had better steering feelings, I have to say. Kind of a little bit artificial here, especially at higher speeds, but whoa, that air suspension is set so stiff that it feels like a sports car here at high speed. The downside of that is you really do lose comfort, no doubt about that. So this air suspension is set to such a stiff trim, especially in here in the sports mode, that you don't feel at all that it's an air suspension. And when you set it to the comfort mode, here's a nice solution here with a turning knob and steering wheel. We know the Porsche introduced that, and that's better than to like search something around down here. So even when set to the comfort mode, and when there are like, you know, some, you know, some splits in the road or something, maybe, you know, where bridges are being connected, or like here now, you feel them really really intensively so especially combination here 22 inch wheels the bigger ones so if you go for an AMG model stick with the smallest wheels possible that are offered to the vehicle because this will give you you know the best comfort possible so but once again it proves that with Mercedes their base models are really set way in the comfort level then in the middle comes Audi and BMW both with their base models and their sport models and then at the top end or at the other side again there's Mercedes comfort wise with their AMG models so there's like a big gap in between at Mercedes so very interesting strategy whereas Audi and BMW more move their sporty models you know it's more like a smoother transition between comfortness comfortness <laughs> and sportiness <laughs> yeah so here at 100 kilometers on our motorway by the way and you also heard that probably I mean the exhaust note was there yes from this optional sports exhaust but here, mile kilometers an hour, 60 miles an hour, so a reasonable motorway speed. Super silent in here, the noise insulation is great. So, seating position also upright and comfortable. So there, comfort wise, from the noise level and the seating, this is awesome, definitely. And there's also a lot of fun here to ease it around the exit of the motorway. And we'll soon have another motorway acceleration, and after that, we have an agile driving up the hill. Oh, and by the way, here in the tunnel, you can once again see this great ambient lighting. Wow, this is one of my favorite features of this vehicle here in GLE in general. Cruise control set, keeping the distance to the car in front of me. And there's also blind spot monitor, and we have a red triangle appearing in the side mirror. And the lane keeping assist is not obtrusive at all. It's rather kind of passive, so to speak, because this car is in some ways a little bit old school and still set on something like this. Whoa, awesome. Wow. This from an SUV wallet, it feels so stable. 230 kilometers an hour, really stable here in this high speed corner noise insulation still at such a great level wow this is so convincing really amazing and i mean bmw x5m or x6m and audi q8 rs q8 in this case they're all similar in the excavation figures and they all have you know their specialties and how they're different as well only the porsche Cayenne turbo gt we recently shown that to you that is now way like half a second faster in the acceleration figure but 
all these of course come somewhat very close and well, wow I mean you don't feel it in your ear you're in the SUV on the one hand because it's so stable and so well to control on the other hand you still have this upright seating position and you're driving a super sporty vehicle without getting back pain <laughs> that's of course one of the advantages here of a GLE AMG Ooh, the tunnel Remember last time I went into that tunnel with the Porsche 911 GT3 Touring and I had wheel spin while sound checking? This won't happen here, but what will happen to the exhaust? Let's see. Woo! Whoa! I think sound wise this was even better than with the Porsche, wasn't it? Wow. This optional performance exhaust is really something, and I mean. You know that especially here in Germany, we have meanwhile all these OPFs, so these auto particle filter. Listen and repeat, auto particle filter. <laughs> so that's like the, uh, the filters for the petrol engines. Um, auto motor is like the normal petrol engine, you know. <laughs> that's interesting, right? Yeah, the Germans. So, and although these are in place now, and this is even a mild hybrid engine, and it has cylinder on demand, so Sometimes you also see a symbol in the instruments that you're running on four cylinders for fuel savings. Yeah, still some 12 liters or more kilometers or some um, 20 mbg. And when you go for a six cylinder GLE, then you can have some rather nine liters or more kilometers or more towards 30 mbg actually. And then again, you have this performance here driving up Autogefühl's peak. Let's see here about steering kind of light. Wow, great acceleration out of the corner. Whew. Of course, rear-wheel bias from this all-wheel drive, so it's a rear-wheel driven platform and you have always more power at the rear and you also feel that. The road's still a little bit wet and here when we have some buildings, for example, we can go back to the combat mode very quickly with the turning jog here and then also the sound note goes down and we are rather you know normally silent so taking in care here of the inhabitants close to the round and as soon as we pass it here and gets a little bit more woodish again then we can tune it up once again to the race mode or sports plus mode and so on and so on of course i would not recommend to use the race mode on public roads so not everything I do is really to be recommended here. <laughs> so uh, we have some stuff in the car already flying around with the G-forces. Oh, leaving off the throttle, have you heard that? I'm going off the throttle. There is blah, 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 from that exhaust. Not sure if you can pick it up on the microphone. Whoa, <laughs> that sounds really something. Didn't expect that here. And now the famous hairpin corner is to come. Let's see how the car handles there. Turning in hard. Yeah, nicely done. Of course, you feel the weight somewhat, but what a great and fun performance here. You should compare the competitors, the Audi RS Q8. We had that in the comparison video with the Aston Martin DBX or also the X5M or BMW X6M. Tune into these episodes.